again. Welcome back. Welcome to our weekend. We are sitting outside of Lowe's. We meaning Audrey, Wyatt, and myself. We came to town this morning and did some Easter shopping. You will have already seen that video. I'll link it for you in case you want to watch it. Justin needed us to stop by Lowe's and grab some things. He must be planning on using the chainsaw because he needs chainsaw, ch ch what? chainsaw oil, gas, and some different things. So we're going to run in here and get that. He's apparently misplaced some stuff moving. He said he's looked everywhere he could think to look and can't find some of his things. So we're going to go in there and get what he needs. Then you want to pick us up some lunch, head home, do some stuff around the house, I'm assuming. And then um, we'll just take you through the weekend with us. It'll probably, probably be a full weekend vlog Saturday and Sunday. If you're new, welcome. I'm Tiffany. This is our small town life. We are a simple southern family. We share our life here on YouTube with you. Um, starting our own little one acre homestead, mobile home living. If any of that sounds interesting to you, hit that subscribe button and join us. We sure would love to have you. He might get in his morning nap in. I'm ready for some grilling weather. Oh, the wind. The wind, y'all. I made it in and out of Lowe's without looking at any plants. That's surprising. Somebody got pizza. Would that be you? No. <laughs> I thought I would show you that I got all of my tomatoes up potted, except for this is some that I started later when I had knocked some others over that actually made it. So <laughs> it's good. We'll have lots of tomatoes and they're doing really well since I separated them and put them in their own cups. Letting some of them sit in the window, but they're doing fine down in the bathtub too. Just being extra cautious to keep them turned. And all of the peppers, they should be ready to be separated probably later this week. I'm really, really excited about this though. <laughs> Y'all, they're doing, they're doing well. I was a little bit, I don't want to say nervous or hesitant. I knew what I, I knew what I was doing. But do you ever really know what you're doing? Like, there's always that chance that something could go wrong. Something could still grow, <laughs> go wrong. But I'm glad that we're at least to this point. And after I separated them, they're still doing well. Yay! What you doing, buddy? I'm gonna get him some more clothes. He just wore his pajamas when we went to town earlier and he got them dirty. So he needs some clothes. What do we wanna wear today, bud? We've put his clothes in mine and Justin's closet for now. They'll go into his bedroom that he's gonna be sharing with Huddy eventually. But for now, they're in here. And it's fit pretty well. We just put it right inside the door. And some of y'all have about a full house tour now that we're like getting our furniture in here, getting things done. And I'm going to be doing that and hopefully soon. Um, I do have the empty house tour that you can go and watch if you've not seen it. But I kind of wanted to wait until I had some more of my decorations out. I don't have anything hung up on walls yet. I mean, we're still slowly working through it. Like for example, here in this bathroom, those shelves are still empty for the most part. And then in our bedroom, I got rid of my bedspread. When we moved, we've just been using a quilt, which is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But I wanna get some of those last little things. Well, are you just having a good old time? I wanna get some of those last things and get some stuff hung up on the wall. It's gonna be a lived in house, no matter when you see it. But I've just been waiting on those last few things to be done. No matter when you see it, you're probably going to see things like plants in my bathtub and dirty clothes in a laundry basket. That That's, I mean, it's real life. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to hide those things, but just trying to get a few things done before I show it off again. I about forgot to get you some socks. I knew I opened this drawer for a reason. It was to get socks. <laughs>
never bothered about what could be coming. Every day we danced and life was smiling. We were young and drunk and love. He's so cute. Wanna go outside? Think everybody else is already out there doing some work. Audrey's weed eating. I believe that's a first for her. There's just a lot that needs to be done outside. Uh, stuff that needs to be picked up out of the yard. Grass that needs something done with it. All those things. Oh, it's windy. Hear me. Had colder nights. And so we covered up these elderberry plants. Just protecting them for, from the last little chance of frost. Sometimes clouds got in our favorite places, but we were young and unaware. Oh, I got you, there's no reason to chase and pay. Justin worked so hard getting this pile cleared up, that tree that was underneath all of it cleared up and cut into firewood, and he got it all taken care of. How much? Don't we need like an egg or something to go in this? No, don't sling it out. <laughs> okay, stop. Uh, a little bit more. Okay, start in. Why don't you do what's for dinner? Oops. <laughs> My bad. It's okay. Keep on doing this one or? You're gonna get right beside it. Right here? Yes, sir. Straight down, straight up. Jiggle it a little bit. Now gently push it out with your hand. Right. I don't trust myself to do that. Oh, got you. Beautiful biscuit. Put it on your pan. Alright. Well. Yes, sir. Good job. Oh. We're having breakfast for dinner. And Easton said he would be my helper. Got it Easton said the little biscuit is for Wyatt. Just his size, huh? Yep. Oh, yeah.
down and died, stood still. So we see here, after the battle, uh, Abner and his men are trying to get away. And, and like many a time, Azahel was probably very eager to do something well in the sight of David. He was very eager. He said, you know, if I got Abner, I could probably end this whole conflict. You know, if you get the right person in a battle, you think to yourself, well, this whole thing will end. You know, I, we will kill Abner and this thing will be, oh, and Abner warned him and warned him and finally Abner said, I can't do anything else but protect myself and I have to kill this man. So he did. He didn't want to kill Azahel. He didn't mean to kill Azahel. But because he did, death was required of him by Joab. You see, he got himself put in a very dangerous place. Right. Not something he wanted to do, but something that just happened. Because then Joab was going to come get him. You see, just like Abner, we are in a very dangerous place right. with God. You see, it may be something that we don't even know, or maybe something we didn't mean to do, or maybe something that we didn't want to do, but it just happened, and guess what? We have sinned against God. Yeah. And death is required of that sin. Knew it not. And listen to this. When Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Azahel, his brother. He said, well, why is that foolish? Well, go back to Joshua. Let's read a little bit. This is a lot of reading uh, throughout the Bible here, but I think it's very, very pertinent to the, to the message. In chapter 20 of the book of Joshua, listen to this. The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither, and they shall be your refuge from what? The avenger of of blood. Right. And when he that doth flee unto one of these cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city, meaning if he gets inside the gate, if he enters the gate of this city and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them and give him a place that he may dwell among men to the gate of a city that God himself told Joshua to build for a place that would save him from exactly the situation that he found himself in. Right. He was standing in the gate of salvation. And he got pulled to the side. By Joab. Right. Nonetheless. You would think if he saw Joab standing over there, he would run from him. You would think he said no. He, he said, he, you can think that he's walking into the gate and somebody, and he looks over and sees Joab and Joab just says, come here. Come over here. I'd be like, are you, your name's Joab, right? You want to kill me. I'm not coming over there. But he was standing in the gate of refuge, looked over and saw Joab, the brother of the man that he killed, knowing that he had been looking for him for I don't know how long and was deceived by the kindness in Joab's voice and walked over there. I imagine that you can even imagine he was about to do this into the gate and stop and turned and went to Joab. See, how many of our people that we know personally have been standing in the gate of refuge, being able to take one more step and get safety from the world, to get safety from death, to remove themselves from harm, but they just looked to the side and saw the world saying, come here. Yes. Come here, I got something better for you. Come over here. You don't need to walk through that gate. You don't need to accept Jesus. Look over here at me. Joab probably said, hey, buddy, come on over here. Joab wasn't standing there with a knife. If he was standing there with a knife, Abner probably would have ran into the city. Satan doesn't stand there with a knife. Right. Satan doesn't stand there with a pitchfork and red horns and a fiery tail and a serpent's tongue. That's right. He stands over there as a woman or as a man or as an opportunity for a little more money right. or as an opportunity for, for a good time. Come on. 
as an opportunity to say, you don't need Jesus. You don't want to take a step into that refuge and become a bore. You don't want to take a step into that refuge and lose your friends. You don't want to take a step into that refuge and walk away from all this stuff that the world has to offer. But the only thing the world has to offer you, friends, is death. Happy Sunday, y'all. We just got home from church. We had a good church service. And Justin is actually taking the three big kids to the park to play baseball for a little bit. Wyatt had just went to sleep. He's not had a nap all day, and it's 1.30, and so I knew that I needed to let him nap. So they're gone, and I'm staying here with him for a little while. We may ride up there when he wakes up. I don't know, I've got some other things around the house that I may do. They were gonna grab something for lunch, and I'm having some leftover barbecue that we had a couple of nights ago. And so that's what I'm going to have for lunch. And then I'll probably allow myself to chill for a little bit while Wyatt's napping. And I don't know. We'll just have to see what the day holds. There's lunch. <laughs> this little fella took a two-hour nap. And I sat here and, and held him for most of that. He napped for a little while and started to wake up so I got him and sat down with him and he napped some more. Oh, he's just been chilling. And now he's super happy. Are you super happy? Are you so happy now? Yes. I love you. We'll go outside. Oh, that air conditioner was really loud. I didn't realize it was so loud until it cut off. We may go outside and see if we can do some stuff out there. Does that sound like fun? Before we get supper ready? My mom and stepdad have been going on a little vacation this weekend. And so we've been helping out with their doggies. So I'm going to go let their inside dog out. I'll probably put her out here in the pen and let her play with the outside puppies for a little while. I've also got to uncover those elderberry bushes. I covered them back up last night because it got cold again. And now I need to uncover them and let them get some sunshine. Hopefully these cold nights are about done. Hey, Brox, come on. Come on. Oh, there you go. Go see them. Oh, my eyes are watering. This pollen. <laughs> allergies, allergies. I have a raised bed garden planner that I've been putting together. I'm going to do a whole video on it to share with y'all. I think I may do a little bit of work on that right now. It'll be in a different video, but it's going to eventually find its home right here outside of these sliding doors. We're going to have a patio area out here, and you'll see what I'm planning on planting in it, but it's going to be something that's just very easy to go out the door and get. I think I'll work on that a little while because it is so nice. It is so nice outside right now. Here, bud. Want a cookie? Uh, uh, hey, how to you uh, give me your pap? Uh, Thank you. Look at the wind blowing your hair. Sweet thing. Dirty hands or happy hands? I was going to get my sourdough starter out and get it ready to make sourdough bread the next day, but I remembered that this Amish friendship bread was going to be ready to use, so I'm going to do that instead. Audrey actually helped with dinner. She made us some hamburger helper. It was delicious sat down and watched AFV together. Thought it was precious that Wyatt was rubbing Huddy's noggin. 
Thank y'all for spending some time with us this weekend. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.